Welcome to the e-commerce growth show brought to you by Segmentify, the fast, lean learning machine, the fastest learning, most revenue generating personalization platform for e-commerce. Hey guys, welcome to the e-commerce growth show. I'm pleased to say that at the moment it's 26 degrees outside, fresh from lockdown central in the south of Bristol. And a uh, really lovely day today. It was my um, oldest boy, John's eighth birthday. So um, we were trying to make it uh, as, uh, as, great, as great as possible for him. A um, bit different than normal, as you can probably imagine. No kids um, running around. But um, we had the family zoomed in um, for a little bit. And he had his cake and he got his skateboard. So he was all good. And uh, hopefully you won't hear the kids sort of shouting ball in there because the uh, sprinkler's out in the garden. So only we're, we'll hopefully hear some lovely birds or something in the background. Anyway. It's time to welcome our guest today. Now, we have a, a great guy called Mike Morrison. Now, Mike is an e-commerce pro. He's been an e-commerce pro for the past 20 years. And uh, this is really fascinating. He actually cut his teeth back in the early 2000s, uh, co-founding iWoot.com. Now, I can't remember that, but it's iWantOneOfThose.com, which I'm sure many of you will remember. And obviously, it's still, still around now. Very successful um, site. And um, Mike basically built that business up um, to around about 100 staff and then left at, at some point, took a took an exit and so on. And um, I, I mean, that was times when Google wasn't really even a player. It was kind of Yahoo and stuff. I do remember that when I was a, when I was a kid. Um, but anyway, um, from then, Mike uh, worked in a number of startups, took that expertise, I'm sure, and, uh, and then went into a number of head of e-commerce roles for a good 10 years in the Brighton area. Um, notably um, the RSPCA and numerous other econ brands, and uh, and then ended uh, working up uh, in a very well known Magento agency in the area until quite recently, and uh, now um, is really keen uh, to offer some support to the e commerce community in that area in sort of product manager, project roles, or head of commerce e commerce roles, um, looking to predominantly help people. Uh, get to the next level in terms of digital marketing. Hello, Mike. Hi, Phil. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, thanks. How are you? Excellent, thank you. Thanks for thanks for the great intro as well. I appreciate that. Hey, hey, not at all, not at all. So why don't we start off with, I, I'm intrigued, as I mentioned at the beginning. How how did iWoot come about? How did you found such an amazing business right back then? Um, yeah, there was three of us initially, three co-founders. Um, there was one guy who I, I knew through a friend who was quite keen to sell some of the, the gadgets that he'd been picking up on his travels, um, sell it online. At the time, we didn't really know of any other uh, gadgets websites doing that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. yeah, we just kind of came together. We had the right kind of uh, skill sets that matched each other. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we got it launched in the early days of uh, 2000, just before the first dot-com crash anyway. Yeah, no, sure. Now that sounds really, really cool. So why don't you tell the guys today um, what you'd like to bring to the table? Um, I thought my kind of uh, theme would be five simple SEO steps for growth. Um, these are five simple and uh, free steps as well. So these are mm -hmm. the sorts of things that um, I suppose any SEO experts would know about these things already. This is kind of uh, part yeah. of the course for them. But for sure. digital marketers in general, there's a few yeah. more kind of SEO specifics that might be of interest. Sounds excellent. Um, I'm, I'm excited to hear more. Go for it. All right, then. Um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 as I say, this is not aimed at um, SEO experts, but sure. uh, I just want to go through a few things that uh, you know, no doubt have heard of um, sure. and, and maybe dug into a little bit, but uh, just giving you a few yeah. more specifics without getting too technical. Um, so the yeah. first area I wanted to focus on was the Google Search Console. Um, I mean, everyone's aware of Google Analytics and Google Ads and the whole suite of uh, things that Google brings to the, to the table. But the Search Console is often something that isn't uh, set yeah. up uh, by a lot of smaller businesses anyway, and it's not uh, as widely used as it should be. It's a free tool, uh, used to be called Webmaster Tools. Um, and it's a great way of showing uh, the merchants what how Google is seeing your website. Um, right. There's a, a lot of great information in there once it's set up. Um, give you historical information on what people are searching for to get to the site, how healthy yeah. the site is, which pages are good, that kind of thing. Um, 
I come oh. to it myself a few years back when uh, the travel website I was working with uh, got a manual action or a penalty, um, mm-hmm. which wasn't through any nefarious SEO deeds. It was uh, just like a combination of, uh, of errors that kind of bubbled to the surface. And we got this penalty. So we started digging really deep into the search console. Um, and uh, within a few days, we managed to get the penalty overturned because it was just like a, like a big bug on, on the website. Mm-hmm. But it showed us just how much great stuff is in there and how you can really yeah. utilize it to uh, improve your, your site's rankings. Um, wow. So you've got I things like... Error. Sorry, sorry, carry, on. carry on, go for it. Um, yeah, so you've got um, errors uh, in, in the tool. It will show you what the, the mistakes are that your website's flagging up, whether it's mobile or desktop. Uh, mm-hmm. Are there any technical errors? Are there any code errors? Have you got pages that are uh, de-indexed by accident? Um, it shows you the performance um, of the website year on year, so it looks at clicks, impressions, mm-hmm. click-through rate, positions for your site. Um, often these things can be a little bit misleading. One thing leads to another. They're not always kind of causative, but um, the statistics as a whole uh, give you a great insight uh, into where the website's been changing, especially if you look at the the marketplace and your competitors, why is your website dropping down? Um, yeah. Like click-through rate is, is an important thing for um, mm-hmm. are people actually clicking on your results? Are they coming through to the website? Are they bouncing back off mm-hmm. of it? Um, and then you can do deep dives on uh, specific URLs. If you've got a particular page that's not doing as well as it has in the past, you can look at it yeah. and see, well, is it still indexed by Google? Has it got the same positions? Is there anything specifically wrong with it? Um, has it not been indexed for a while? Does it need the content to be refreshed? All that kind of thing. So it's a really yeah. great tool to, to dig into uh, with some very um, headline stats that can be um, shared yeah. with the execs, but uh, you can get a lot of detail if you drill down into it. So, I mean, that sounds brilliant. So, I mean, how kind of that information, is it is it set up in a palatable way in terms of getting that information? Do you need to be particularly skilled to you know, understand what this search console can offer? Um, it's fairly simple to set up in the first place. Um, you just need a little bit of code on your website or if you've got WordPress, uh, a couple of free extensions will get it set up for you very quickly. Um, once it's set up, uh, as I say, the graphs are quite user-friendly. So you can share these graphs right. with senior managers in the company or the boss um, and you can show some very kind of visual year-on-year stats. So what if, if SEO in general is down, then you can dig into that and you can share a graph that will show you is it the impressions that are down. You may not be getting much traffic to the website for a particular search, but if yeah. uh, if the impressions are down, maybe the search as a whole is not happening very much. Maybe customers aren't searching quite as much. So obviously the world yeah. of travel right now has been yeah. uh, greatly afflicted by people simply not searching for flights or for holidays yeah. because it's not on people's radar right now. Um, yeah. So that's obviously not a f- reflection of the health of the website. It's just that that's that's the yeah. marketplace right now. So the graphs in there are very shareable and very very um, consumable. Yeah, that sounds very interesting. And uh, as well about Bing. Yeah, can't forget about Bing. <laughs> <laughs> Bing is still out there. Uh, it's still got a <laughs> marketplace. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess you look at the demographics and people who use Bing tends to be. I mean, without sounding too patronizing, it's often uh, older demographic, maybe less technical. Um, and that's often because yeah. uh, Bing is the default search engine for a lot of uh, PCs. Um, a lot of uh, Dell laptops, for example. So I get it, I get it. If you buy a Dell laptop, um, then yeah. it will often yeah. be very straightforward to accept everything as the default. Um, yeah. And then you use whatever browser is given to you and the search engine mm. will usually be Bing. Yeah, um, that completely yeah. makes sense because yeah. I see it a lot. And then obviously I just ditch it and go to Google, but there's a demographic yeah. that wouldn't necessarily do that, right? No, some people won't do it because they think it's too complex, so they don't want to. Um, yeah. Don't get scared by the whole thing. But Bing, I mean, in many respects, they copy what Bing has been doing, uh, what Google's been doing. But yeah. um, they've got a, a very, you know, significant platform. Um, in previous mm-hmm. businesses I've worked at, we've had um, like twenty percent of the traffic coming from Bing, depending on time wow. of year and who's using it and so on. Um, and yeah. They have their own so way you can't ignore it. Then. Sorry, Sigan. I was just going to say, you can't ignore it then, clearly, that kind of volume of traffic coming from, from it. Can't, no, and it's, it's pretty big in yeah. the States as well. And, you know, if you've got yeah. a global presence, um, you yeah. have to make sure that when you're uh, marketing in different countries, there'll be a different proportion of people using Google. Um, same with mobile and desktop as well. So yeah. it's worth having a look at their Bing Webmaster yeah. tools, um, set that up, and you'll get different kind yeah. of insights. Broadly speaking, it's the same kind of stuff, but... There's always something different in there that will give you a little bit of an extra angle on, on yeah. your content. Interesting. And are there any other 
search engines which are still common in some way around the world or you know what I mean and, and also have these kind of tools or it's just those two um yeah i mean if you go to uh you know russia and china so one you've got uh, baidu yeah. you've got yandex um yeah. we we're looking at china in the travel company i was working at a few years ago yeah. Uh, yeah possibly doing some marketing there and they they have a different kind yeah. of um, an approach to paid and organic so um, right. i believe over there we had a chinese person working this for a while and they were saying that the paid results are actually more respected than the organic results um, whereas over here right. it's the exact opposite. Yeah. You'll tend to trust Completely. the organic more because it's kind of yeah. position. But again, yeah. Why is that? it's um, well, there, there, there's a whole lot of cultural stuff involved. I think oh, that yeah. uh, the the state of play with Baidu at the time meant that yeah. um, there were a lot of people gaming. There was the gaming the, the algorithms, and they were able to do that successfully. Whereas if somebody had the money, the muscle to get to yeah. the top of the paid results, then they yeah. probably had the presence to uh, right. spend to the top. So you'd get okay. the, you know, the Alibabas right. and the massive yeah. websites that were I see. Top. So it would be well correlated as opposed to what it can be over here is not, right? The, yeah, and obviously the, the, the narrower the niche, the more yeah. um, a smaller spend can get you to the top of the results. Yeah. But um, yeah, over here, again, we're speaking as digital marketers, but um, we can't forget that to, to many people out there, especially those who are just kind of coming into this e-commerce world, um, they're not really aware yeah. of the whole paid and organic thing because Google is yeah. deliberately muddied the water it's, it's a lot mm. um sort of smaller difference between paid and organic now and people don't know what you're talking about when you talk about those those two um search sources yeah no it's very interesting very interesting so moving on to your second point yeah i just want to talk a little bit about meta um sure. so the meta title and description uh, keywords aren't really used anymore um but this was yeah. one of the the first areas in search that companies would look at when they're setting up a web page was um, the, and it's a very kind of uh, formal way of looking at a web page in general or, or, a, or a newspaper yeah. page. You've got your title, you've got a subtitle, description, and so on. Um, uh -huh. Meta title description, that's, that's the, the bulk of the content you see in the Google search pages. So you've got a URL, you've got the title um, of yeah. the, the search page, and you've got the, the description below that. So yeah. it's very important to spend a, a bit of time on that for that your homepage, but also your key product pages. Uh, and make sure that what you're writing, it has the keywords in it. Um, so you need to get uh, kind of keywordy and algorithmic in that you use the keywords um, and fairly upfront in the title, but the focus yeah. really has to be on readability. Google is moving more and more towards uh, the content being really important. It's got to be readable. It's got to be meaningful. Yeah. So if somebody yeah. does a search for something and they see some of their keywords highlighted in the search results, then they're more likely to get drawn towards that. So having a, yeah. a, a strong call to action in the title um, with yeah. the brand tax on the end as well, um, having a description which is also desc very descriptive and helpful, but readable, not like yeah. machine written. Um, it's extremely important to make sure that your your uh, pages are seen in the results. That is interesting. And is there is there limits to it? Can you go on too much? Or I mean, you know, is there? Is that just me asking a stupid question? Since it's limited to a certain number of characters anyway. Yeah, I mean that's the other th thing is depending on your demographic. Uh, most e-commerce websites are becoming more and more mobile, of course. Um, some yeah. websites are, you know, 90% plus mobile. Um, but yeah. again, the travel industry, depending on your, your demographic and uh, what niche of the travel industry or whatever you're in, yeah. um, you'll often find that yeah. desktop is still ahead of mobile. So it's uh, it's easy mm. to get carried away with the, the whole mobile is king sort of conversation. But it is key when you're yeah. looking at those, those mobile searches that you've got a certain number of uh, characters yeah. that will appear yeah. on the search results before they get truncated. Yeah. So it is okay. important to make sure you've got you know something like 30, 40 characters before that disappears um, yeah. in the description. But yeah. Yeah, Google Google is putting a lot more effort into the especially the top of the page with with paid ads yeah. with uh, the rich yeah. content. So it's important to try and take advantage of these these changes yeah. in Google. But um, sure. as I said earlier, click through rate is very important. So uh, if you uh -huh. can have you know fairly solid marketing stuff in there, you might have you might have an offer you want to promote. Um, or uh, a really kind of uh, catchy product slogan or something. But if you get that into the description and people click in those ads, that will help yeah. uh, push them up as well. If Google sure. can see people bouncing back off a web page in a couple of seconds yeah. or so, that is one mm -hmm. of the, the ranking factors Google looks at. They don't do right. much, okay. they don't look at conversion rate or anything. But if people are right. bouncing back off a website, then clearly they can see the customer isn't interested in that website yeah, yeah, and yeah. start pushing yeah. them slowly down the rankings. So that is interesting for me because, like, 
I, I was going to ask you a, a slightly, I wouldn't say left field, but slightly off, just off what you're talking about on the SEO front, but on the conversion front, like obviously the, for me, I've, I've heard so much about how conversion on mobile is so much lower than yeah. desktop. Have, have, have you seen that change remarkably over the last however long that that conversation has been going on for? Um, I think with, with the, the much greater focus over the last, you know, five to 10 years, um, yeah. since people have been saying mobile is, is, is crucial, um, certainly the conversion yeah. crept up because, um, you know, yeah. phones are becoming bigger. Websites are genuinely yeah. becoming mobile first. It's often one of these mantras yeah. that's just declare yeah. a project, make sure it's mobile first. Yeah. And what do the yeah. designers do? They go off and they design a desktop picture um, and they yeah. stick it on a wall and they fill the screen with this beautiful yeah. big page and then they yeah. come back and do the mobile stuff afterwards. So it's yeah. been a struggle from my experience to actually start genuinely yeah. mobile first projects. But with yeah. that approach taken, um, we, we definitely see conversion rates going up, but they're still yeah. behind desktop conversion rates because yeah. um, you also, have, of course, have to look at cross device behavior. So sometimes people look at the mobile during the day yeah. and they'd leave a reminder or once they've yeah. been on the website and they've been yeah. or whatever, or they've entered the yeah. email address, they're going to get uh, followed around the internet by, you know, retargeting by abandoned cart email. Yeah. And so on. yeah. And How does that work then? Like with respect to say, say my, my experience of, you know, I'm, I'm 46, I'm old school. I, I still haven't bought anything. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I still haven't bought anything on a mobile yet. I've used it purely in that bracket of research only, and then go and buy it later on desktop where, for whatever reason, I think it's securer. You know, I can just click and my card's there. I'm sure it'll be the same mobile. So, so if, I, if I'm if i bouncing off sites a lot, because I'm going there, I haven't looked going off, and then I'm going home and doing it later. Does, is Google clever enough to know that? Or is that just is that just looked at as separate buckets in terms of mobile ranking and then um, desktop ranking? Or does it is it able to bring it together? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been one of the big kind of battles is, is uh, cross-device tracking, which, which obviously yeah. we're better at. But... Um, people will often, um, you know, speaking again, making presumptions here, but people often logged in on their mobile uh, with yeah. uh, Chrome and Google. They have a Google account um, or a Gmail yeah. account in the background. So, you, you know, the, the fact is that you're doing a search there. You can be tailed later on the desktop on the same logged in um, account. So some of the more behavioral yeah. stuff can't be tracked, but if you're logged in, no. then um, websites will pick you up. They'll send you abandoned car emails. Um, retargeting yeah. can work as well to some extent. So. Yeah. But, yeah. it, but it wouldn't affect your ranking, though. Aid the tracking yeah. uh, cookies. Okay, but it wouldn't affect your your ranking effectively because ultimately you're not knowing. If I'm if I'm a non ID, if I'm a non user, and I go mobile and I bounce off and then I go and buy later on, are you is Google penalising you on mobile because of that behaviour? No, no. I mean, so if you, like you're on an incognito session on Chrome, for example. Yeah. So yeah, if you go into that and just have a look around and make yourself kind of yeah. deliberately. Um, incognito as it were uh, then yeah you, you would theoretically not be tracked I mean Google's looking at certain things there's always controversy about what they're actually looking at but um, ultimately yeah. they, they shouldn't be able to track you if you've gone incognito with uh, deleting your cookies after the session so it should be a fresh session when you then go on to a different machine later that night um, and make that purchase yeah. finally so so yeah, yeah it's the, Google wants to be able to track and show merchants that you can be tra- trailed from machine to machine from from mobile, yeah. voice search, obviously, as well in there, um, to desktop. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, ultimately, when, you, when you're logged in and you've got your all your, your ID set up, that's how they'll, they'll track you around the internet. Yeah, yeah. No, very interesting, very interesting. Cool. Next point? Um, yeah, schema. Um, it's a, a, a bit of a technical area, but um, the idea of schema is it's just a, a very... Uh, a slightly techie way of coding your um, content so that Google can see what it is that you're trying to offer. Um, so if you've got um, events on your website or if you've got reviews um, or if you have specific mm-hmm. kinds of content that you want to be picked out as that, then if you put a schema around it and there's a whole website set up, uh, schema.org, that will tell you all the different types like mm-hmm. uh, recipes as well, uh, courses, jobs yeah. that you're offering, local listings. If you mark up that content with the right schema, then Google reads that, and if it likes the website in general and it sees the scheme and it's correctly set up, then it will pull additional yeah. content onto the, the SERPs, the search engine result pages. Um, and you'll sure. get things like uh, rich results or rich snippets, as you used to call them. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. Feature results. You can have yeah. um, more yeah. information about your business. Um, yeah. Events get pulled out into a, almost like a calendar sort of format. Recipes yeah. will pull out pictures of the, the, the food. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so these are all great yeah. ways of using that content. So if you've paid for a review platform, which can cost you know a few thousand pounds a month, uh, yeah. if you know FIFO and Trustpilot and so on, if you've yeah. got good reviews coming in on your product pages and your homepage and so on, you want to make sure that Google can see those and actually pull yeah. in the results. And then if yeah, somebody sees that. you next to competitor selling the same product, but you've got yeah. uh, reviews which are presumably decent reviews, um, you're more likely to get the click through. Yeah, no, totally. I remember because I, I did a spell at Trustpilot and that was the whole the whole proposition, really. Where I suppose whether it's Trustpilot or another provider like FIFA or whatever, um, where you're able to um, capitalize on the rich snippet of the stars and, and so on. And and obviously that we know that if you are you're offering a service and you've got a competitor and they've got the rich snippet, they've got the stars and you haven't, it's highly, well, it's more likely that they will be drawn to that result and it'll probably be higher as well. Yeah. Because Google rank higher, right? And, and the thing is you can't really lie about the reviews either. So it's one thing if you're using a review platform, you to yeah. show often what merchants will do is only show four and five star reviews on the page because you obviously want to, to show yeah. your, your best yeah. reviews. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. proved of in general by those mer- by those yeah. um, review platforms and Google's fine with that. But ultimately, your yeah. aggregate rating has to go on the page. Uh, and Google needs to see what yeah. is your actual overall ranking for that page. And if you're only getting yeah, two that's stars right. out of five, then you've got a question yeah. to ask yourself, why are we only getting two stars out of five? Oh, completely. And that, again, that was, uh, I think, the reason why Trustpilot, particularly anyway, having worked there, was such a powerful and, and uh, you know platform and blew up kind of globally was because it was clearly saying that the customer is taking control over the business in that sense. And you can't lie about how they are ex- being, how they're experiencing you. And then, so you either going to do something about it proactively, you know, and take advantage of it, or you're going to bury your head in the sand. And that was, you know, that, that was the kind of general proposition that most people were like, actually, we see as an opportunity to get transparency over how people are feeling about our business and then do something amazing about it that then brings our ratings right up and then we get all the benefits of what you're just talking about. Absolutely. And it's one of the things that Amazon pioneered so well in the early days. They, they did so many things uh, really? that intuitively you would look at and say, why, why would you do that? Um, they started showing reviews on their page where you wow. don't get a, a two-star review for a product and then you look at the reviews and you realize that half the reviews are about, all mm. um, oh, my package hasn't mm. arrived yet. You know, Nothing to do with the product yeah. at all. Um, no. The fact that no. we're being honest and, and feeding back, yeah. sometimes uploading images, um, Amazon thought, well, look, if we just keep people on the page, people read about it, they will they will trust the merchant because we're being honest. And yeah, you might not yeah. have this product now today, but you'll come back next week because you'll trust the fact that we're yeah. being very transparent. Yeah, and I suppose you're talking about dwell times, right, as well, like the yeah. content on the page, the reading through, that's obviously a no-brainer, right? If they're reading through a bunch of reviews, that's a benefit in terms of the amount of time they're on the site. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the content is often very, I mean, you'll get a lot of generic reviews like, yeah, I love the product, it's brilliant, it does what it says in the tin. Um, but if yeah. you look at the content itself yeah. is actually, you know, it's got a few keywords and stuff in it. There's some value to that. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it's fresh. So yeah. it's constantly refreshing itself. If you've got a good feed of reviews coming in yeah. um, and they refresh yeah. themselves every day with the latest couple of reviews, then that's great mm-hmm. for the page because you're yeah, totally. actually yeah. automatically yeah. writing the page for you. That's it. And we, we tried to take advantage of that as well at Segmentify because um, we've got a number of brands who, you know, work with Bizarre Voice or Trustpilot or whatever. And we've integrated um, with those platforms to take that, you know, not kind of dilute that journey. So they've gone and seen that great experience on the, you know, on the on the Google page. They've come into the site, they've gone to the PDP, and then bang, you know, you've got recommendations with reviews and ratings attached to them and stuff like that. It just takes experience to the to the next little marginal gain level, if you like. Yeah. Than having to navigate elsewhere to find reviews. They're all fully sort of integrated with the with the recommendations and content or whatever it is you're serving on the page. Definitely, and there's, there's there's new things now with um, the likes of Q and A that you can get on the website where uh, Yachtpo, yeah, another new player. So they're they're introducing questions and answers where yeah. um, instead of having a separate FAQ page, you allow customers yeah. to ask a question about a specific product um, on that page yeah. itself, and then the merchant can yeah. read that and say, yeah, that's worth responding to. They put the response yeah. up, and then other people can read that. So you've got customers. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit like you know a WordPress page where you've got people can add a comment and then the editor can right. respond to that. And that again yeah, yeah. adds um, an assurance that that the merchants reading the contents, the the reading the customer mm-hmm. comments, they're responding, and that generates more content. And again, that's all good for Google. Absolutely, uh, very interesting. So moving on to your fourth point, Chrome site audit. Yeah, it's um, 
another free tool which uh, sits within yeah. the Chrome browser. Um, right. Again, most of you may have come across this before, but uh, the audit was introduced relatively recently, maybe a year or two ago, something like that. There's always yeah. features coming in. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, just right click on the page and uh, you know inspect element, view element, yeah. whatever it is, yeah. and you um, go to the audit tab and mm -hmm. you run that audit on any website. So you can run it on your own website, run it on your competitor's website, um, and very quickly, within about ten minutes, you could run you know five audits with yourself and your your, your competitors and see who ranks best for uh, factors like performance, for SEO, mm -hmm. for accessibility, wow. uh, for AMP pages if you've got those. Um, What's that? So it's like the accelerated mobile pages where you've got specific uh, okay. speeded up pages for mobile. Um, and it'll give you a, a, a very useful little audit. Some of it's incredibly technical and uh, takes a fair bit of investigation, but there's often some really yeah. uh, quick uh, quick wins you can get from those. Uh, like, yeah. for example, one of the first bits mm -hmm. that will say was you, you, your, your hero image is way too big. Uh, it might have looked really? beautiful in the boardroom. You've got this beautiful yeah. lifestyle picture of somebody using the product. <laughs> But it might yeah. be 270k, um, and if it's that file size, you know that's on mobile. It's going to take longer to 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 download. Um, even yeah. desktop, it's not great. Um, if that yeah. can be reduced by half or by more, you can compress the image. You can simplify yeah, yeah. it. You can store it on a CDN yeah. somewhere. There's loads of ways you can address that. And um, if you yeah. instill that sort of uh, philosophy with the design team as well as the developers, then yeah. you'll try and start cutting down the files and the file sizes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. on the pages. Yeah. That's so interesting, isn't it? How kind of, and this is Google, right? You're talking about inspect yeah. and audit, right? Isn't it, isn't it amazing? Like, I mean, obviously how Google have, you know, used the concept of transparency to just drive that kind of almost open marketplace of, of, of competition to just, to allow that level of, you know, best practice to be viewed and if I'm, you know what I mean there's nothing closed off about that at all I can look at all my competitors I can look at all the minutial metrics and I can try and drive those marginal gains where they're doing better than me with this particular metric or that one that's quite amazing really isn't it that the whole kind of concept of how they've done that yeah it's it, this whole ecosystem is, is incredible you think yeah. you know 25 years ago none of this existed at all I know you've got people creating podcasts yeah. to discuss this really arcane yeah. sort of, uh, piece of technology um but the fact that yeah. they've got this suite of products that they offer for free um almost across yeah. the board um it's yeah. often quite hard to find apart from google ads of course which is where they get the money mm. from it's often yeah. hard to yeah. find stuff that's that's in the google yeah. that actually costs anything yeah. so, no, i do find it interesting because what they've done is cleverly said you know in what they're doing they don't have to control it they they make the open um they make the open and transparent vehicle Everybody does else does all the work, and it keeps them top of the top of the top of the pile. Like, yeah, you know. So it's it's ultimately the, the, an amazing strategy because you couldn't you couldn't control all that and do all that, but by being able to let everybody else by market forces do it, you by default are still going to maximize your opportunity of being the best. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very interesting. And by, by focusing on simplicity, simple UX, um, and a quality mm -hmm. product, you know they're they're always the the ones to look for. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, you've got uh, you know the Google app, the, the the app system they've got now is that the Play Store is is um, obviously still behind the the iTunes one, but um, it still offers so much free stuff out there. So when Huawei brings out its latest phones and it can't yeah. use the Google products, it's yeah. hamstrung from the very beginning. So they've got the best physical yeah. phones on the market now, the P40 Pro, yeah, right. because they can't use Google products, you've got a yeah. massive black mark against them. If they cannot work with Google, um, yeah. then they're, they're stunted straight out of the blocks. So, so yeah, yeah. It, it's a fascinating field, and all these free tools yeah. um, are there, obviously, to help them. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, as that person once said, you know, if, if, uh, if you think the product's free, then you are the product. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it is clearly symbiotic, isn't it? It's amazing yeah. just for me to, to to realize just what they've facilitated, but gen genuinely drives their business at the end of the day, you know, as well as everybody else. You know, it's, it's kind of absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's clever, it's clever. So, what about your last your last point then? Performance yeah. improvement. Tell us about that. The, the, the last main area. So, performance improvements is something that can be um, experienced very simply, very anecdotally by looking at your website on the phone. So, how quickly does it load up? 
uh, yeah. how quickly does it load up compared to the competition. But again, something like the Chrome Audit uh, will give you a lot of insights in, on the performance side of things. So how long does it take for your web page to start uh, loading on the page? Um, there's lots of technical terms like, you know, first contentful paint and stuff like that. But how, how quickly can your customers start interacting on your website, whether it's scrolling or typing into search or whatever it is? Um, that's, that's crucial for, for the website's user uh, engagement. Uh, and therefore, how is it going to perform in the Google rankings? So as I said earlier, if, if somebody bounces off a website because it's too slow, yeah. within a couple yeah. of seconds or so, that by Google and they start pushing the website down. So performance is yeah. really key. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can look at. The Chrome Audit is a great start. There's lots of other free tools or free trials yeah. which will tell you what is slowing the site down. Um, yeah. might not be yeah. your, there might not be the hosting. It might be something that's actually on the website, the code that you're using, the images that you're loading. But you can yeah. get free extensions, the likes of Ghostery, which I use, and uh, Built With is another one. Yeah. Um, yeah. You stick that on your Chrome tab and you look at a website, it will show yeah. you all of the, the cookies and the tracking code and stuff that a website's loading up. Um, yeah. Most of that stuff's really useful stuff. So you have things like Hotjar code, which is looking at user sessions and creating videos for the merchants to look at. Uh, you've uh -huh. got Google Analytics, you've got retargeting tags, you've got Facebook pixel, all that stuff. But these yeah. are all... Uh, bits of code that are slowing the website down as well. Um, I see. Somebody's saying about kind of almost like auditing your code and make sure there's no old code sat in there, just basically loading for no reason or whatever whatever it's doing. Yeah, I think you know every few months it's worth auditing yeah. your codes. Just just get a screenshot yeah. from those uh, free extensions. Look at the code that you've got on your website. Some of the stuff could be from a couple of years back where a previous yeah. um, digital marketer thought, let's give this a free go. Uh, I spoke yeah. to a company at a conference and they said, drop this code on your site and you get all this amazing analysis out of it. But if you're not yeah. using it, get rid of it straight away yeah, because it's really. only slowing down the website. Yeah. Uh, I know even, something. Sorry, testing, I was going to say, yeah, with, if, you, yeah. if you're running A-B tests on the site, um, oh, yeah, yeah. you might be using Google Optimize or VWO or A-B Tasty, Adobe, whatever it is. Um, yeah, yeah. Unless you've got a really good server set up and you're running tests from the server itself, most of yeah. these are uh, browser side. So the user goes onto the website, they'll often see a flicker um, when they start loading the page and that yeah. shows them that they're actually being pushed into the variation of a test. Um, yeah. that's, uh, many customers don't notice it, it's not a problem, but that's just one very visible example of uh, how the code is slowing the site down and how that can actually itself affect the result of that experiment. If um, somebody's getting a mm. slower experience because there's an experiment yeah. going on, that's yeah. an affecting experiment. So, yeah, that's amazing. You were talking about this like a flicker. Yeah. I didn't know that that was something that would be such a marginal thing, but clearly you were saying some metrics, weren't you, about how how quickly the bounce rate is affected like. Yeah, and there's all sorts of stats out there that say, you know, for every second of page loads before your page is ready, you will lose yeah. X percent of conversion rate. Um, I think yeah. it's something like when you get to seven seconds, you've lost 30% oh, yeah, of conversion rate. Yeah, I'm not sure. Sure, that would be a nightmare, wouldn't it? It's it's. I mean, yeah. all about these things. So the the there's a lot of other things in the mix as well. Of course, if the website isn't compelling enough, if the images yeah. are poor, or your yeah. your messaging when you land on the page isn't clear enough, these are all factors, yeah. of course, as well. But if the page isn't taking yeah. isn't loading quickly enough, if yeah. the performance of your website is poor, um, yeah. you're not going to get anybody who's going to dedicate themselves to doing a search, reading about the product. Going to basket, going to checkouts. Yeah. We're not going to waste their time. Oh, completely. It was funny actually because um, when I was, at, I mean, when I, as you know, right, I'm I'm old, right. But when when I was working at Brightpole, sort of, um, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, I remember it distinctly because I I'm old enough to know when it was, you know, dial-up modem and it took 50, 50 years to load oh, yeah, a page. Yeah, yeah. You know when <laughs> when we now look at it now, we're like, wow, it took thirty seconds. Mm, that's okay, don't worry. But. <laughs> It was really funny when I was at Brightpole and there was a young young lad there. Like I, I had a bunch of millennials that I was managing at the time. It was it was great fun. I, I must admit I had to I had to put the size twelve boot in for a little while, but then they you know they sort themselves out. But um, this guy was sat there by the computer, and I and I and I, we were waiting for a page you know to load. And I I'm just st standing there just casually. And I tell you not, I, I kid you not, within a millisecond, right? He starts effing and blinding. That's and he pretty much closed the browser down. And I'm like, wow. I mean, is that your expectation of the internet? Yeah. And like, I told him that story and he kind of laughed, but it's just, it's like you said, there's a whole different world out there with the youngsters now, what they expect. Yeah. So when you talk about tiny little 
you know, marginal losses in page load and how that then affects a, a bounce rate. To someone like me, I'm thinking to myself, no way. I'm surely going to wait another second or two. But so I, I actually sort of that horse's mouth how these guys, uh, you know, react. It's amazing. It, it is incredible. It's, and I, I'm the yeah. same, you know, when, when we started at iWoods back in 2000, we came in the morning and yeah. we were working from my, my colleague's bedroom, basically. And he would switch yeah. on his, I don't know, was it 14.4K modem or 28? Yeah. 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 And we'd have Brilliant. to sit there awkwardly while the computer was booting up and then into oh, yeah. the end, you have know, that wheel in the background. And there was no business happening until that was up, you know? So no. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. But yeah, the, yeah. We, we, we've all become impatient ourselves as well, but it's, it's hilarious yeah. to see somebody in, act, in action. This is what people do when they come to the website. If it's not going to yeah. respond that quickly, they're off. No. No, that's the real deal. Just one other thing, actually, because I, I, we use Built with a lot for a completely different reasons and reasons. I'm sure every everybody knows that Built with is a fantastic tool for, for everybody in the tech space to understand, you know, who yeah. their competitors are, who's on their site, what they're doing. And that's become an integral part of, you know, site based research before you even pitch, because I, I'm a great believer. A lot of salespeople actually are, are very believe very strongly that the, the the day of the of the sale the day of the salesman you know the day of the, the outbounder is pretty much gone you know mm-hmm. everything is relationship everything is trust you know the kind of conversion rates nowadays on just outbounding is is atrocious like because you know it's it's changing the landscape's changing but what what we do in segmentify obviously is that we're going to find as much research as we possibly can on the site before we put together some kind of um you know value proposition that says look you know your current speed is x you know your current personalization experience from the home page after three clicks is not what it should be it should be this da, 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 you know so we obviously use built with big time when we know what the e-commerce platform is and say you use a nosto or fresh relevance or whatever it might be mm. and we run those those re- we run that research and then we usually do a free a b split test over a 14 or 30 day period right. to then obviously prove to the e-commerce brand without paying any money or any setup or any work that we're actually better, you know, and that's obviously worked incredibly in our favor because we're not just going out there and going, Hey, we're a personalization platform. Do you want to, do you want to buy us? You know, yeah. which, which you can imagine doesn't work that well. Um, but anyway, sorry, I, I, I digressed a bit, but what I've noticed and built with is this thing coming up called COVID. So, I mean, what, what, why, why do you have COVID in built with like in the tech list? Do you know? I haven't even seen that to be honest. Um, I haven't. I mean, I, I used built with for um, like what technology when I was used, working at the Magento agency. We'd look at uh, you know what version yeah. of Magento it was using or whether yeah. it was using Magento um, yeah. and all the other. Yeah, things. But weird. there is there is weird. Some COVID weird thing. Stuff. Google's doing some stuff with COVID. Um, they're working with some merchants so that uh, the right. uh, merchants of a certain size are offering COVID services. You know, for for delivery and pickup. So ah uh, right. Could easily be corrected here and create some furious uh, comment on this podcast, but it may well be. Hey, that. It, it could be a Google tool that's been used to say this, this merchant is working with us to uh, help um, you know, the wider community deliver products to people that's safe and so. we have these following conditions we fall into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that sounds pretty logical. No, fair play. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> um, brilliant. So, um, Tell us a bit how um, the best way guys can get in touch with you, particularly if at the moment we're during COVID and, you know, they're looking for project work, obviously from what they've heard from you so far, the great pointers and information. Um, If they're looking for, you know, a particular project or a head of e-commerce role or consultancy, you know, particularly in the Brighton or surrounding kind of area, what's the best way to get hold of you? Um, well, I just discovered this morning that if you search for Mike Morrison Brighton, um, I'm number one in the results. So, uh, yay! I've, Excellent. I've optimized myself for Brighton, which is great. <laughs> Brilliant. See, uh, your expertise has no bounds. Absolutely. <laughs> so, the first result is my LinkedIn page. So, you know, uh, feel free to come on there and connect. Um, Amazing. Otherwise, if you search for Mike Morrison, you'll find this uh, ice hockey yeah. player in North America somewhere. So, uh, <laughs> it's got to be Mike Morrison Brighton. And um, yeah. Absolutely happy to 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 pick up the phone or get in touch with anybody who's interested yeah amazing so um just to sort of finish off the last couple of bits um what would you love the listeners to take away if there was like one key nugget for them to remember like right now when when we finish um i think in terms of the seo side of things and, and website audits in general it always helps to have somebody look at your website with a fresh pair of eyes 
yeah. um, I, I know that a lot of people listening to this will either be SEO people or they'll have SEO people working with them and they're often doing a great job um, and often it's you know it's one of these things that you, you kind of cringe when somebody says I'm bringing in a consultant to look at this or that because you know it's, mm-hmm. it's like you're you're clipping somebody's wings but um, it's often the case that somebody coming in and doing a fresh audit will come up with some new observations or you can work together with the SEO resource in-house to actually start pushing certain elements where they might have a list of things to work on. Um, and it's very hard without any kind of internal sponsors to push them forward and say to the developers or the project team or the execs, these yeah. are the priorities for the business. So um, yeah. I think it's important to, to, to carry out these audits or get them done independently, um, build them into a priority list. What are the quick wins? And they're often worth, uh, worth doing before anything else. But what are the most important things to your website? Is it about performance? Is it the content? Is it the call to action and stuff? And these, yeah. this extra pair of eyes looking at the website, working mm-hmm. with the internal resource, um, can often get a lot of stuff cleared off the list and just, just push the website higher in a very short period of time. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense because I, I appreciate that all of us have got so much going on. I mean, the core activity, you know, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I, I have said this a few times in other episodes, but what we found at Segmentify is having a managed services team that actually optimize personalization on behalf of the client, you know, on behalf of the e-commerce manager or with the e-commerce manager. Right. Is another is another reason why if if you've got to put that on your plate as well, how do you get the best out of the personalization of your website after you've invested in a platform like Segmentify or whatever? Yeah. To then make sure your conversion is the best it can be. And you add that to all the other things you've got to do, like the things you talked about earlier about A-B testing or, you know, the audits and the code and the schemas and all that. That's a nightmare. I mean, there's so much to do. Yeah. So by, you know, almost outsourcing some of that to experts that can actually work with you and on behalf of you, um, we found particularly actually it's been phenomenal in, a, in, in, a bit, in our ability to sort of differentiate um, between other players out there, you know. So I understand it completely, that sort of fresh fresh eyes and uh you know um more resource on it if you like so i mean in terms of you mike um in, you know the listeners might be might be investing in seo already they might be talking to digital marketing agency i mean what would you say to those guys in terms of them talking to you um yeah i think like i say it's it's uh the years of experience i've got in e-commerce um yeah setting up and, and starting up and building uh, existing businesses as well um, yeah. there's a lot of experience I've picked up from the UX side and the SEO side. So, um, as I say, you know, with the SEO audits, you're often working with people internally and you don't want to kind of, uh, stand on their toes. But, um, I think yeah. bringing someone in with the experience, uh, all around of the whole digital marketing suite, uh, yeah. what is the website doing, what is it not doing? Where could it be better? Um, yeah. you know, I, 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 I like this idea of just coming out as a fresh pair of eyes to a website that at first glance looks very well polished and selling some great yeah. products but there's yeah. three or four key things that are missing um, or could be yeah. better and they're often quick wins so um, yeah. I, would say I'd, I like to think I'm that fresh pair of eyes sometimes they don't feel yeah. that fresh these days um, yeah. they're a bit older than you but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it often helps bring, the, bring somebody in just for a couple of months whatever it is um, yeah. or even just a few yeah. days for a project just to work with the internal resource um, and yeah. see if we can get more out of what's there already. Because as you say, there's always a lot of stuff that's great. There's always a lot of work to be done. Yeah. But, um, you know, the yeah. digital marketers don't always have a whole lot of time to get the stuff. Yeah. So they want to make sure that they're proving their own value to the business. Absolutely. And that's got to be the reason why, you know, you can help as well. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that that's why, you know, digital marketing agencies and consultants exist, right? I mean, you've yeah. got to be good at aid to companies like that, um, like our listeners. Um, so, Mike. Thank you so much for that. I felt that was uh, really, really interesting. I picked up loads of uh, info. That was great to talk to you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope um, you felt it was uh, valuable. Um, i just like to say, as I always do, really, um, please register for all the podcasts that we do. Um, not only, obviously, this one will be available um, on segmentify.com forward slash podcast. Um, but we hope to get Mike back in the future as well and do some future chats and stuff, see how he's getting on. Um, so do register on that page and you'll get access to all the new podcasts as they come out. And of course, all the ones that are already on there. I think we're up to, I don't know, a good dozen or something now that are on there. And they're just a bunch of other guys coming on shortly. Um, 
the other thing I'll say as well is if you if you like the podcast and you're interested in being involved or you want to feedback or there are any topics that you particularly want us to cover off, then do feel, feel free to email me anytime. I'm phil at segmentify.com. Put us to the test and let us prove we can drive more revenue for you. Sign up for a completely free proof of concept or split test against your current provider. Set up and optimized by our team within a few days at segmentify.com slash demo.